All right, so let's start to color grade the raw footage. You have two different methods on how you can do it. I will show you the first one. So you have this note and remember everything that you're going to adjust in your color wheels will affect this note. So it will also affect your footage. As an example, I'm just really quick going to boost up the contrast and you see already more light is coming in. Then I want to lower the midtones or the gain of the total image. Then I want to boost the saturation a bit more. Ah, you see, now I get more color. I want to lower the highlights. So go to highlights, lower the highlights a bit. And it's already pretty nice. But to get this result, I need to do a lot of things in the color wheel. So you have another trick to do it. And this is the second method that I would recommend you start using as well when you work with raw footage. So you're going to delete uh, this color grade node. So how to do this, select the node, click on your right and reset your node. So we are back in our raw footage. Now you want to open up the effects tool and you want to search for color space transform. Then you apply this to your note. So then you can choose between a few settings. Important note here is you need to understand the profile that you shot your footage with. So what do I mean with this? You need to know which color space you shot your footage. The second thing is you want to give an input gamma. Okay, I shot this on my Sony with S-Log3. So I'm gonna search for that. Right here is Sony S-Log3. And now look on this side, what happens with the image. Boom, it automatically gives you already a really good starting point. So on the first note, you did the color space transform. And now you can create a new note where you are going to do your basic corrections. Okay, you're gonna click on this note, click on your right. You're gonna add a serial note. And right here, we have a new node to work in. So in this node, we're gonna do the basic corrections. So how do you know what your highlights are, your midtones are, and your shadows? We want to read the scopes, okay? You have different uh, scopes to choose from. You have waveforms, you have vector scopes. So let's go to the waveforms. This is the most easiest one, I think, if you just start out reading from scopes. Okay, so you see right up here, this image is very bright with a lot of light. And you see this little mountain, and these are the highlights. And you see also in this image uh, that the highlights are somewhere here. Have a look to this. When I point out on the highlights, you see these mountains are the highlights. And now we can really adjust the image with our wheels. So the first thing that we want to do, we want to bring the brightness a bit down. So we can do that with the gain, okay? So you have different controls. So you can select this wheel and you can push it to the left, then you push it all the way down or you can push it to the right, then you push it all the way up. Now I want to give you an advanced trick and tip, especially when you're working in log footage. Right up here, you see color wheels and you see log wheels. I would recommend to jump to log wheels. So that's what we're also gonna do right now because you have just way more control over your log footage. So let's switch to log wheels. And then right here, we see offsets, highlights, midtones, and shadows. And that makes things even more easy because the offset means basically that the overall brightness of the image will go down. Okay, so let's grab this wheel and pull it all the way to the left. Something like this. Okay. Then we want to add some uh, contrast. And you want to be aware that you don't peak your highlights above the 8, 9, 6. All right. So that's basically what I always uh, try to avoid because I will give you an example. If you have something like this and you look to that image, it doesn't look really nice. So let's grab this wheel and pull it all the way down. Now give it more contrast. 
And when I give it more contrast, you see everything will white out. So let's give it a lot of contrast. And you also see now that I'm way too uh, bright here with my highlights, but it doesn't matter because we can put this down. So now you see it's really getting a nice image. Okay, so I'm really happy. Now I can explain you more about the midtones. So the midtone is basically a tone that is very basic, okay? It's very soft. So to understand this even better, we see here the highlights, it's a really bright light. And here we see the midtones, it's a really natural light. And if you see on my scopes, if you have a look here, you see that the midtones are somewhere between 640 and 256. I think somewhere here the trees are the midtones. So you can decide to pull the midtones down to make it even darker. And you see that we only pull the midtones down. Or you want to brighten up the midtones, but I just leave them as it is because I'm really happy with this image. And once again, a tip, be really gentle with these wheels, because if you do big adjustments, this can look really terrible. Okay, now we have the shadows and uh, the shadows are basically the darker parts of your image and literally are the shadows. So here. I point out the shadow, and if you look to my scope, somewhere here are the shadows. You see this? Now maybe you can also see in this scope how the light is working in your image. So what do I mean with this? Our image is going from normal light to highlight. So normal light to peak the highlights. And right up here we have a hole. And this little hole is this uh, shadow hole. And then we have normal light again over here. Now, what we can do is we can pull the shadows down if we want to. Then we can also jump back to the other wheel. So now if you do an adjustment in the regular color wheels, you will see that if I grab the gamma and I pull it down, like everything is pulling down, not only here, in my scopes, but almost everything is pulled down. So let me pull this down and let's go back to the lock wheel and show you the gamma. And then it's only pulling the midtones down. You see that? It's a big difference. If you hit this, by the way, you can reset it to your normal use. So now we also want to pull down the highlights in our lock wheel. Make it more soft, pull the offsets even more down, something like this. This is a good starting point. All right, so now let's fix the white balance. Where can you fix the white balance? You have also two options up here. One is you can do this automatically and fix your temperature. So what do I mean with white balance? So let's say I want to give this a bit more of a cold tone. So I will push this to the left. So my blues are getting bigger. Okay, I will show you what I mean. So pull it all the way to the left and you see my image is getting colder. If I double click on this, it jumps back to the normal standard. And you can also give this a more warm tone. So you can pull it all the way up and then it's like the sun is shining really hard. Then you also have the green tint and if you go to the right, you have a more pink tint. So you can play around with this until you're really satisfied with your image. The second method, so if you don't have enough time to do all these steps, double click on it and just simply select this white balance tool, click on it go to the widest point on your image like this and click on it and boom, DaVinci Resolve automatically did the white balance for you. Step three, because we did the color space transform, we did basic corrections and the white balance. Now we want to create a new serial node. All right, so in this node, we are gonna apply a creative look. So let's go to our 
color wheels, just our regular color wheels. So in here you see that, for example, in the gain, you see a little point here. You can grab this point and you can move it all the way to the left or to the right or to the more purple color. And in here you can really give your footage a creative look. Let's say I want to give this a bit more of a red look. Push it all the way to the left, to the red side. But be really gentle with this. Now we go to the gamma and I will to want to push the gamma to the blues. And then I want to pull the overall image to the yellow side. Okay, I like this look, it's a bit old school. So let me check what we just created from lock to a nice color, from lock to a nice color. And if you want to disable this note, you can do that by hitting your keyboard, control D, then you disable it. And if you hit control D again, you enable it. So that way you can really see what you created in your color page. So disable it and disable it. So right here we add the color space transform, then we did the white balance and some basic uh, correction. And here we give our footage some creative look. So now you did some basic color correction and with this color correction, you are ready to deliver your film to YouTube. All right, so another trick that I want to show you is if you want to zoom into this image or zoom out, I always use my wheel on my mouse, but you can do that also in this corner. You can zoom in 300%. So I hold my scroll button, I can move it around. If you hit fit, you will see the image back in the normal state. One more cool tip and then we're almost done. Let's say you have a lot of clips to color grade. If you need to color grade clip by clip, it will take a lot of time. So I have one shortcut for this. Just select your clip that you want to color grade. Then go with the mouse on the clip that you already color graded. Click on your right and then you go to apply the grade. So we want to apply the grade of the image that we already color graded. Apply the grade and now we applied the grade to our new image. 